this is Svetlana from Come With Cosplay and today the dream of all Warhammer fans are finally going to come true. So today I am finally going to build something from the Warhammer universe, except it is not a miniature, it will be a maxiature. For the release of Warhammer Age of Sigma Realms of Ruin, the developers asked us to create something really amazing from the game. So in this video I'm going to show you how I'm building the staff of Siege, wheeled by the Lord of Change himself from the Disciples of Siege. And to make it extra challenging, all I'm going to use are just some simple PVC pipes, uh, a lot of EVA foam and many LEDs. So this will be quite interesting. Well, and if you haven't heard of the game before, Warhammer Age of Sigma Realms of Ruin is a real-time strategy game made by Frontier using the official Warhammer license. It has an amazing cinematic story campaign, offers 1 vs 1 and 2 vs 2 multiplayer, a conquest mode, a level editor, scene editor and an army painter which lets you personalize your units. You can choose to play as one of the four factions, the Stormcast Eternals, or a Cruel Boys, Nighthaunt or Siege, each with completely different units and playstyles. If you want to check out the game, just follow the link in the video description below. But now, enough of talking, let's start crafting! Let's check out the reference first. When searching for the stuff online, I could only find photos of the miniature. While this was good for color reference, I needed a little bit more to actually build a large version of the stuff. Luckily Frontier sent us the 3D files directly from the game. So let's see what we got. I already knew this S-shaped part here would be an issue and as I'm addicted to LEDs, everything had to light up. To do so and keep the build a little bit easier, I decided to exchange the orb with more crystals. To get started, Benny first drew me a blueprint based on the 3D file. As always, he used Adobe Illustrator to trace the overall shape of the staff. Since I planned on building everything only with foam, getting this right was super important. Next, he printed it out on paper. This way I could estimate the right size for my prop. Even though I'm not a blue two-headed chaos god birdman, I wanted that the staff at least feels right. For the base I chose to use unplasticized non-toxic PVC pipes. These are actually used by plumbers and electricians and can be heat banded safely without releasing any toxic fumes. I knew the result would turn out quite wobbly, but having only limited time and materials, it was a trade-off I was willing to make. The rest of the pipes were then attached with a ton of hot glue, as you can see here. And while this maybe looks flimsy, the bond was super strong. Praise the god of hot glue! The more the better! Super glue was pretty useful as well. At this point I actually decided to separate the head from the shaft and connect everything with magnets. It was just much easier to paint it this way. Finally Benny used our laser cutter to get those two wooden pieces for me. I stuck them together and with a ton of more hot glue they went straight into the bottom of the stuff. Then we added another one to the top as well and this was the result. As you can see, the top was detachable and the stuff looked already pretty huge. Yes, size does matter. Now on to my favorite part, installing all the LEDs. Even though the bottom doesn't light up in the reference, I thought it would be super awesome to make the crystal shaft shine from its core. And while I only wrapped the strips around the straight pipe, Illuminating the dragon thing in the middle clearly needed a little bit more work. Just a little. To connect both hat and shaft, I used this handy servo connection plugs. And as you can see, LEDs made the whole thing even better. Next part was the top. Only problem, these side thingies are actually floating. To achieve this look, a Benny laser cut a base out of 3mm plexiglass. The plan was to cover this with layers of foam and only keep the floating area free. 
The middle part behind the glowing eye would have just enough space to hide the battery and chip for the light effects. I hope my cleverness pleases the scene. So now that this issue was solved, the next step was to glue everything on layer by layer. First super glue for the plexiglass and then contact cement for all the foam layers. To speed up the process, Benny used our handy laser cutter to get all the parts super quick. Finally, the circuit fit perfectly in. Now to connect the hat and the stuff, I first dremeled in a little gap into my PVC pipe and simply slid in the plexiglass. And the next step, hot glue! Afterwards, I closed the round area on the side and attached magnets on the other one. Some LEDs were still missing though. I also wanted to light up the eye and the circle around it. Even though creating the light up rings was a little bit of extra effort. Once this step was done though, the first result looked already pretty cool. Just had to connect the last wires, plug in the chip and battery and squeeze everything inside this little box. Next up, I wrote the code for my LED strips, super professional as always. And here was the base with all the lights in action. And if I shook it, it even lit up brighter. Loved it! Well, and now, finally, I could continue the build and cover up the LEDs. To diffuse the lights properly, I actually used LED foam in different thicknesses. If you're interested, I have links for all products I worked with in the video description. More diffusion material means smoother light effects, so I stacked as many layers as I could here. The grip got wrapped as well. Achieving the crystal look was surprisingly easy with some extra foam strips. Next, Benny cut out all the detail layers for me. I can only imagine how much time we saved by not doing this all by hand. Then I dremeled everything a little bit here and there and began gluing all elements on. It's fascinating how a few additional layers of foam make everything already look much better. The scales were also cut out by our laser, got their edges dremeled and were carefully glued onto the stuff. Really like those details, by the way. Afterwards, it was time to cover up the wooden areas. Maybe you can understand now that I had to construct the whole stuff in a very specific order. With over 20 years of cosplay experience, I'm able to see and analyze this puzzle just by taking a look at the reference. So don't worry if you find yourself struggling with crazy builds like these. Everything gets easier with time, patience and especially practice. Doing this kind of stuff has nothing to do with talent, but actually trying, failing and learning for a long time. And yes, if you do cosplay for over 20 years, I'm sure you can also save up for a fancy laser cutter. Anyway, with this the hat of the staff of the Lord of Change was officially done. Yay! Next on, it was time to finish the bottom. I covered up the wooden ring again and added a ton of foam layers on top, all while Minna enjoyed her beauty sleep. Then with a little bit of Dremel off, this part got nice and round and I only had to add another extra ring in the middle. Okay, now on to the really tricky part, the dragon thingy. First, I added extra diffusion on top of the LEDs. I actually kept them on while working to make sure they don't break in the middle of the crafting process. To get the right shape, Benny used the original 3D model and adjusted it in a way that my PVC pipe would fit in. Using the Papakura technique, he created then some foam patterns which then got printed out, cut out and traced piece by piece on the 5mm LED foam. This material is actually super soft and wobbly and gluing all parts together was a real challenge. But as you can see, I was able to slowly build up the dragon thingy, which fit perfectly over my heat shaped PVC pipe. Next, I only had to add more glue to the leftover edges, press this last seam carefully together and 
the base was done. Gosh, this part was tough. Compared to that, applying the details was actually quite chill. I only added some swirls and circles and covered up the rest of the PVC pipe with 5mm foam as well. And here is the finished piece. I'm really proud of the result and very happy that the Papakura technique worked out so well. For the swirly shaft itself, I simply cut out 5mm LED foam bevels into long strips and glued them piece by piece all around. This technique is really easy and doesn't take a lot of time, but the result looked really awesome and was pretty close to the reference, I would say. Then I connected my plugs, hid them underneath the foam and finished the transition between the lower and the upper part. Finally, I carved out some rough spikes, pretty simple as well as you can see, and added the last details to the Lord of Change weapon. Well, and this was it! Might look easy in the video, but I was dead after 8 days of non-stop crafting. But I think the prop turned out great and I was super proud. I think the lights running through it looked also amazing and I love the extra movement sensor effect I added. And yes, I know, it's still a bit wobbly, but as I said at the beginning, it was a trade-off for me to get the stuff to light up all the way through. And I simply didn't have the tools to build in a thick bended metal rod to fix the issue. So please just enjoy this build and cheer for Benny when he's painting this chaos god monstrosity next. Before mixing any paints though, we first had to prime the foam properly. With four thick layers of flex bond, the foam was nice and smooth and became far more durable and resistant. A very important step, by the way. Then Benny grabbed three different shades of blue and began very carefully to apply layer by layer onto the crystal part. To keep the foam translucent, every coat had to be super thin. But he did a really good job, don't you think so? Next, he also finished the upper crystal part of the top and added a darker blue to the scales. Well, and then it was time to cover up everything with tape. This step is pretty tedious, but it's still faster than having to paint everything by hand, especially since golden acrylic paint takes many layers before it is finally covering enough. And speaking about gold, Benny is actually always using brown as a base coat and only then adds the final gold layer on top. Saves a ton of time and nerves and the shiny color doesn't require as many layers this way. Last but not least, he also made a stencil for all the round jewels on the sides and then covered these with red airbrush paint. So far so good. Getting rid of the tape next was super rewarding. Luckily Benny and I did a pretty good job here so nothing needed to be fixed and the base paint looked already pretty good. The next step was to add the final details by hand. To highlight the shape of the crystals, Benny first added some darker lines around every single one of them. This took quite a while. Next on, he added brown shades in all the deeper areas and corners. Since we already dabbed on a texture with the primer previously, the golden areas required only a little bit of shades here and there to look interesting. Well, and last but not least, he also added a brighter blue gradient onto all those scales. This step took probably the longest, since he obviously had to do both sides and there were a lot of scales. Overall though, the details were done just in one day. To seal and protect Benny's precious work, he then finally covered the stuff with a thick layer of satin spray varnish. And as you can see now, having two pieces instead of just one massive 2 meter long staff was very handy. The very last step was then to carefully get rid of the masking tape again and free the plexiglass. Well, and now? The staff of the Lord of Change from the Disciples of the Siege was finally done. It took us 8 days to craft the whole foam weapon and 
spend three days to prime and paint everything. Benny and I are incredibly proud of the final result, especially when you turn off the lights. So cool, right? And now, finally, I could do this. And the greatest of Cinch's demons, the Lord of Change. A monstrous and powerful demon, shimmering with raw magic and primed to open an all-consuming gateway to chaos. For watching and congratulations for making it to the end of this video i know this build was a little bit intense but i hope you also enjoyed it and had fun like seeing coming everything together benny and i we had like a lot of fun and we are also like super proud that everything turned out the way it turned out in such a short time and maybe you also got inspired to create something yourself as well like no matter if it's like a miniature or a maxature just like that and as always um if you have any questions just leave me a comment down below and maybe you also have a suggestion what i could build next from the warhammer universe and finally thanks so much to frontier and their trust to bring the stuff of the scene to life I'm really, really excited for Warhammer Age of Sigma Realms of Ruin because I absolutely love all the Frontier games and I was able to play the game already at Gamescom and it looked amazing. So once we are done, we are going to play and you can check out the game in the link in the video description down below. It is amazing. And as always, last but not least, and now with LEDs on, Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and there will be a lot of upcoming videos with LEDs. I need some sleep. And if you don't know what to write yet in the comments, please write on Corgi. Join the Corgi squad and support us even more with the YouTube algorithm. And other than that, ah! see you in the very next crafting video.